now let's talk about foreign policy. Um, I know Reinhold's going to disagree with this, but in terms of all of Donald Trump's official policy, he's probably where he's the best. <laughs> I don't know if Donald Trump is the best on this stuff because he's too incompetent to start a war because he certainly would if he could or if he genuinely believes what he says that he doesn't want to start new wars but then again does he believe anything I don't think so but uh, I think a lot of this may just be a, a lot of his foreign policy record is uh, it's not as bad as Joe Biden's but is the era of interventionism over Harry, you're shaking your head. Why not? No, I'm I'm in your camp of. I think he just doesn't know how. <laughs> I, he tried. He I tried he... the best as he could to try to get a war with Iran, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and Iran didn't bite. Right. <laughs> because he probably Iran's the felt... one that didn't bite on that one, not the United States. Right. Yeah. Right. I, it's just I mean, he probably didn't fill out the correct forms, so or Iran knew they were supposed to bite, so they knew they would get more money and more, and the CIA would give them more armaments, allegedly, you know, to fight. Or maybe he didn't send enough ammo to Iran, allegedly, so they could fight back. Who knows? I, somewhere there was a form not filled out as some Illuminati meeting. So yeah, yeah, I just think it's just too confident. Okay, start one. <laughs> So let's start going through his record. Let's start with North Korea. Trump has met with North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un twice in Hanoi in February 2019 in the DMZ last summer. Trump claimed his bold new diplomacy could result in tremendous things for U.S.-North Korean relations. Trump's relations have yet to produce any concessions that would put North Korea on a path to denuclearization. Kim has continued to test short-range missiles and other weapons. Um, any thoughts on North Korea? Yeah, he, Trump was trying to say he deserved the Nobel Peace Prize for what he did in Korea, and he has actually done absolutely nothing in Korea. As nothing has been accomplished. He's probably given Kim Jong-un more time to build nuclear weapons, which is not necessarily a a win for liberty, having a dictator with nuclear weapons. But uh, he got them to talk to like they're going to reconcile Korea, South, North Korea and South Korea. We're going to come back together again. And then North Korea pretty much shot that in the foot, right? I mean, it's they, they're saying things to keep themselves going, to keep themselves getting interest from these foreign uh, dictation, not dictators, foreign entities, and uh, to keep themselves just afloat. Mm -hmm. And they're just passing the ball down the line, and they're never accomplishing anything. It's, this is the way it's going to be until people start changing the way we deal with that situation. Right, right. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. I think okay, the, right. the easiest, point, yeah. I'm just gonna say the easiest way to deal with the North Korea situation is just open up a bunch of uh, Korean barbecue shops right on the border and just price of admission, just drop your guns here. That's, That's right. <laughs> uh, quote, not ending the wars is uh, one thing that he is often uh, credited for or not. Uh, throughout his time as president, Trump escalated U.S. military involvement in foreign conflicts. Uh, he did it in Somalia. Um, a surge in American airstrikes over the last four months of 2018 pushed the annual death toll of suspected Shabaab fighters in Somalia to the third record high in three years. In 2018, strikes killed 326 people in 47 disclosed acts, according to the Defense Department. During January and February of 2019, the U.S. Africa Command reported killing 225 people in 24 strikes in Somalia. Africa Command maintains that its death toll includes only Shabaab militants, even though the group claims regularly that civilians were also killed. A March 2016 report by Amnesty International found that at least 14 civilians were killed in just five of more than 70 airstrikes the U.S. carried out in Somalia since early 2017. The U.S. military disputes the report, saying none of those strikes resulted in any civilian casualties. The Trump administration has more than doubled the pace of strikes from the Obama years, ordering 35 strikes in 2017 and 45 in 2018. Soon after taking office, Trump declared parts of Somalia areas active hostility uh, of active hostilities, giving the military greater latitude to carry out strikes this is just one highlighted example of his drone usage 
Republicans often like to point out that Barack Obama, the Nobel Peace Prize winner, was the drone warrior, and Trump has almost doubled the drone strike. Uh, and so from a non-interventionist point of view, why are drone strikes problematic? Let me put on my John Stossel hat, Reinhold and Harry. When you use drones to attack foreign adversaries that want to do harm to the United States, isn't that much cleaner than using fighter jets or ground troops? Why are drone strikes a problem? The drone strikes are the problem because you're it still bombs indiscriminately. Um, you may see one target that you have that, that they see think someone's there, but they bomb it. The other problem is the double tap drone strike. It's when the drone strike drones, people rush in to help, and then you drone it again, and then you strike it again. Uh, and that's all people know about drones is the, the US just bombs you, you know, things you don't see in the sky just come down and just bombs you. Yeah, I don't know if it's any better or worse than regular bombing, but it's still bombing. And, and one of the stats that I don't think was included in that is the fact that uh, last year, the United States killed more civilians in Afghanistan than the Taliban did. Yep. Because we're just bombing, you know, we're not taking the care to watch what we're bombing and making sure that, so let's say you're going to go and target a certain individual or a certain group of people, you know, they're not making sure with people on the ground and with good intelligence, which we know that this president doesn't really care about intelligence, um, his briefings or anything else. I'm the most intelligent. I don't know what you're saying. I have the best words. Yeah. But, but then now we're now we're killing even more civilians than the Taliban who are supposed to be fighting because they're killing civilians. I mean, that's uh, just crazy to me. It, it, and one thing that's come clear in all of these discussions of all of these topics is that all the things that we we were upset about Obama on and even Trump was upset about Obama on, he's done bigger. He's gone huge, it's right? It, it's this thing. He's bigger and better. So he's he's put more people in, 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 in ten, detention camps. He's deported more people. He's killed more people through bombing. Mm -hmm. He's, you know... He's doing all of the. He's, he's um, fighting more tariff wars. I mean, when we talk about foreign policy, you know, we end up talking about wars. But foreign policy is more than just wars, too. It's how you're interacting with and, and sanctions, tr trade deals, thing. Yeah, right. If you take a look at what happened here, we've got Iran, who he wanted to bomb into oblivion because they were interfering with um, shipping trade routes, right? Uh, supposedly, you know, they Iran uh, put placed some bombs on a, a, a ship that wasn't even a United States ship, um, and put some holes in it and damaged some property and caused some issues there. Trump wants to bomb them into oblivion over it, but Russia is putting bounties on the heads of American soldiers, and he goes, "Eh, whatever." Yeah, no, the, like that. <laughs> The, the reality is Donald Trump has no principles. Like, so to call Donald Trump a non-interventionist is like calling Donald Trump a constitutionalist or calling Donald Trump a moralist or calling Donald Trump ethical or calling Donald Trump a low tax cutter. Like, it, it, he doesn't believe anything. And so you, with a person like that who is largely transactional, you get some wins, but you also get some losses, you know? And... He, he's my pushback on the idea that he is a non-interventionist. It's just not the case. Like if, if Donald Trump were presented with the opportunity to go to war and he felt that it was in his interest, he would absolutely do it. Is, is he, he just doesn't feel that it is in his interest and he doesn't feel that it is, you know, I mean, he's, he's willing to drop the mother of all bombs, the Moabs. He's willing to, assassinate Soleimani. He's willing to flirt with the line of, you know, war. He just, he, he, he is less interventionist. He does not practice the Wilsonian view of, of war and intervention that George W. Bush practiced. And so that is a positive, right? Like I, right. I'm, I'm going to give well, credit, also, credit to do, but he's he not that he would, He's not he's not 
what we would like him to be or how libertarians would practice foreign policy. Right. We also know that e even though the interventionists and the Wilsonians and the and Bush, they they intervened in other countries in a way like the neocons, you know, they, they're trying to create peace throughout the world through military might and the American superiority and blah, 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 blah. Right. Yeah. But that's at least a principle or a, a, you know, a thought process. It's not, well, my polls are lagging and these guys did something I didn't like. So I'm just going to discriminately bomb them today without thinking about the consequences of what he's doing without thinking about the, the impact it will have the, you know, or even trying to make the case for it. He just says, ah, that's what I want to do today. Yeah, no, it's that's, he's very, 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 very comfortable with the I, I, mindset of militarization. Yeah. He has the domestic policy of John McCain's foreign policy, <laughs> right? Like <laughs> he, he treats American citizens like John McCain treated Syrians, right? So it's if he had the opportunity to treat other nations like he wants to treat leftists, he would, you know, and that's where, where I would warn my fellow libertarians uh, don't treat your fellow citizens like John McCain treated Iraqis. Um, now, Rand Paul went to bat and gave a speech for him at the RNC this week, and uh, he said, I flew with him to Dover Air Force Base to honor two soldiers whose remains were coming home from Afghanistan. I will never forget that evening. I can tell you the president not only felt the pain of these families, but the president is committed to ending this war. He continues, President Trump is the first president in a generation to seek to end war rather than start one. He intends to end the war in Afghanistan. He is bringing our men and women home. He announced today before the show, I read that he was bringing a third of U.S. troops home from Iraq, 3,500 troops. Um, great. Iraq? I thought we were out of Iraq. I know. I thought, uh, <laughs> I thought we were too, but... Uh, I missed that memo then, right? Yeah, so... <laughs> Yeah, we and here's where I go back to like Barack Obama had the inclination to end war, too. He did not start any major wars, but are the people who are saying we should single issue voters on foreign policy, of which a lot of the Ron Paul crowd is from, will tell you that Donald Trump is the only logical choice because he never started any major wars. Neither did Barack Obama and Joe Biden will not either. Like the mistake of Iraq is so permanently baked into the American populace that it will be generations before they ever support any kind of war like that, which is why the warfare state has settled on things like drones and asymm asymmetrical warfare. And we're going to we're going to go fight in Syria. And but we're not going to have our hands on it. We're going to fund other groups. That's the same kind of foreign policy as Ronald Reagan, as Bill Clinton, as Barack Obama. Has he done it to a lesser degree? Absolutely. But he's done the same sorts of asymmetrical light warfare that every other president has done, except George W. Bush, who was, you know, Mr. Kill a Million Iraqis because of bullshit propaganda. Uh, so... <laughs> also believe too if, you, if we look at the numbers and, and i um i may be wrong on this but it's my understanding that we're say let's say he brings home a third of the people that are in afghanistan that's still more than there were there when he took office yeah he put more people in afghanistan so he's bringing and home people that he sent there not you know that that's the that's the thing is he's trying to to went to to claim victory or all this stuff on things that has been manipulated to make it look a certain way, but the reality of it is different. As Matthew Meyer, uh, great comments, he added 14,000 troops to the Middle East in 2019. Trump puts himself first, not the country, and says his foreign policy is worse than Biden's. Trump's foreign policy is losing a tariff war, causing farm bankruptcies to rise, and putting America manufacturing into a recession. Jeez. Great points. Great points, Matthew. Mm -hmm. Um, now, and it, just because Rand Paul is willing to go out and give a speech, it doesn't mean that you should give Trump a pass, I guess is what we're saying. So, you know, there are there are definite wins towards a non-interventionist policy here, which is why Rand Paul is willing to give that speech. But Rand Paul, going back to our earlier discussion about 
Kenosha and some of the things we're talking about there understands the calculation of I'll do this. I'll say I'll do these things because then I have more of a voice with Trump. He he has he can he, he calls out Trump when Trump's wrong on things like civil liberties or foreign policy issues and is a counterbalance to Lindsey Graham, who has never met a war he uh, disliked. Um, now, in in his speech, Paul, Paul railed against Biden for supporting this war, but when uh, in but when Congress, in a rare act of bipartisanship, passed a resolution stopping the president and engaging any further military action against Iran without congressional approval, Trump vetoed it. So when Congress just this year said you're not allowed to go to war with Iran, Trump vetoed it is not necessarily the act of a non-interventionist person who's looking for peace. He says, I have the war powers. You're going to let me keep the war powers. I'm not giving this up. So it's has so many things where Donald Trump will do good things. You have to take it with such a big giant grain of salt because he's so unpredictable that he will flip flop at any moment if it benefits him. So some of these militaristic impulses are, are not evidence of a non-interventionist. They're evidence of a person who we, who just feels that domestic foreign policy or domestic policy, specifically igniting culture wars is much more beneficial to his reelection. He wanted, he felt if it hadn't been for impeachment and his bo getting bogged down and trying to defend himself, Oh, he probably felt that a war would have been in his interest to gaining popularity and winning the election, which is why he did the Soleimani stuff he did. So I don't give him – he gets partial credit <laughs> in terms of his record. He backs uh, into some good things. Basically. Yeah. So at, at the end of his first term, he has not ended any wars and has either escalated certain conflicts or risked escalation of military engagement with countries like Iran – when he approved the drone strike of the Iranian general Qasem Soleimani, the Trump administration is in reality risking, resisting, excuse me, any and all attempts by Congress to rescind the authorization for use of military force that previously gave George W. Bush permission to wage war. In the final moments, in the final months of the Obama presidency, approximately 198,000 active duty U.S. military personnel were deployed overseas according to the Pentagon's Defense Manpower Data Center. By comparison, the most recent figure for the Trump administration is 171,000 active duty troops. So he has decreased troop levels by about 25,000. Not to zero, as a libertarian president would fight for.